it's strange but I've never made content about dandruff. Like I've been making content for a while so this is really strange and it's high time I get down to it. Also considering my husband is constantly talking about his dandruff and he refuses to use the stuff I give him and he keeps using just head and shoulders and he swears by head and shoulders. So uh, considering the number of conversations we have at home about dandruff, I'm really surprised I haven't done this yet. I'm Dr. Tanvi Vaidya. I am a dermatologist, a cosmetologist and an aesthetic physician practicing in Mumbai. And today we're going to talk about dandruff and how you can work on it, how you can prevent it, how you can treat it and how you can prevent it from coming back again and again. I'm also going to tell you about a couple of things that I'm sure you already are doing wrong in relation to your dandruff and how you can fix it. So let's get started. So what exactly is this dandruff? Now dandruff is those whitish scales that all of us are so familiar with. I'm sure all of us have had dandruff at some point in our lives. I, I sure have. Um, so essentially when you see those whitish scales falling off your scalp, sometimes you'll see them in your hair, sometimes you'll see them on black t-shirts, you'll see those typical Shahid Kapoor ads uh, on TV where you see lots of those white snowflakes all over their shoulders. That is dandruff. Um, why does dandruff occur? Now dandruff occurs because of a scaling of the cells of your scalp. Now this usually happens because of the overgrowth of a fungus called Malassezia furfur or Malassezia globosa. This fungus also causes a bunch of other things like Pteridosporum folliculitis which is known as fungal acne. It can also cause Pteriasis versicolor which is these whitish patches on your back or your chest when you sweat a lot. Irrespective, right now we're going to talk about dandruff and focus on it. It is a fungus that normally resides on our skin and within our hair. It's a common cell fungus. Now when this overgrows, that's when it's going to lead to all of that scaling and uh, inflammation that's going to be present on your scalp. Now dandruff or seborrheic dermatitis as we call it could also occur in other areas of your body. Like for example, you know, I used to have this as a child and I never realized what was happening. I'm so embarrassed of it when I was in school that I would have these uh, scales on the sides of my nose. It would get red, it would burn sometimes and it would literally scale and I would keep peeling it off. Um, a lot of people have similar such symptoms behind the ears. It's a very common area on the chest, on the upper back. These are all uh, seborrheic areas where the oil production is higher and this is where you tend to typically get seborrheic dermatitis. In fact, also sometimes the corners of the mouth or you know, out here near the chin, a lot of people have it and they don't know it's actually dandruff. It's literally dandruff, it's seborrheic dermatitis on your skin. But more on that later, it's treated with antifungals if you have it on you know these areas. But today I think we're gonna focus about the scalp. We're gonna focus on the scalp and we're gonna um, talk about how you can prevent it and treat it. Now, what are these triggers that typically worsen your dandruff? One is stress, which all of you may have experienced already. Second is winters. In the winters, typically, almost everybody's dandruff tends to flare because of the seasonal change and the way the weather is. Um, third is oiling. Now, this is surprising, right? But when you oil your scalp, you are actually giving that fungus a great, nice coating in a nice, humid environment to grow in. So, avoid oiling strictly. Lastly, there are certain nutritional deficiencies like zinc deficiencies that could lead to worsening of seborrheic dermatitis. There's also certain medical conditions that could cause a worsening of your seborrheic dermatitis. Um, these are as far as your triggers go. Now, what do you do to treat it? Coming to the treatment, uh, the most commonly used treatment that most of us use, particularly my husband uses, is head and shoulders. Shampoos like head and shoulders, clinical clear, and you know, all of these over-the-counter uh, anti dandruff shampoos typically contain something called zinc pyrethione. Now, in all fairness, let me declare here, it works, right? It actually works. I don't have anything against zinc pyrethione, but um, uh, the problem that I have with a lot of these OTC products, not meaning to diss any brands here, uh, is essentially that they're very high in sulfates and they're extremely stripping on your hair and it gets extremely dry. Um, it is a problem with most anti dandruff shampoos, I get it, uh, but there are milder alternatives available. However, the first line of treatment, you know, when you uh, study uh, how you manage seborrheic dermatitis, the first line of management very often is zinc pyrethione. So there's no harm trying out these OTC shampoos first. If, of course, that doesn't work, then we need to give antifungal 
uh, you know, molecules like a ketoconazole or a selenium sulfide or a cyclopyrox oleamine. So there's a bunch of these ingredients that we use to actually kill that fungus or control that fungus so that it doesn't overgrow and give you dandruff. There's also other ingredients like coal tar or salicylic acid which helps to break down those scales. You know, sometimes the scales are very, very thick. Um, they help to break down those scales and reduce the severity of your dandruff. It also helps with better penetration of your antifungal ingredients. So all of it works extremely well. You also get a lot of these ingredients in a leave-on form. So you can leave it on overnight, uh, maybe once or twice a week. Now the deal with these shampoos again, since they tend to be drying, use them only about once or twice a week. Keep them for 5-10 to 10 minutes and then wash it off. Now a lot of them are prescription products, so do not use these on your own without consulting with your dermatologist. But um, do remember that don't use them far too often. Keep them only for 5-10 to 10 minutes and wash them off. Once you wash it off, you may condition your hair well. Just don't let the conditioner touch your scalp because again, that's going to worsen the problem in the same way that oils will occlude. Conditioners will also occlude your scalp. So uh, condition the hair length. The shampoos are meant for your scalp. Oh, so that contact time is mandatory to get the fungus to get controlled. A lot of these shampoos are also now available in sulfate-free formats. So if the drying is a little too problematic for you, you can opt for sulfate-free versions of these shampoos. Uh, other than that, if you have seborrheic dermatitis anywhere else, like you know, sides of your nose, behind the ears, when you apply the shampoo on your scalp, you can actually just apply a little. This is just a little hack. Uh, you can apply it on those areas as well. Keep it for five minutes, wash it off. That would also really work well. If your seborrheic dermatitis is extremely severe, then your dermatologist may have to prescribe uh, steroid-based solutions or oral antifungals to get that fungus under control, to get the inflammation to settle. But of course, leave these bits to your dermatologist. Don't try to self-medicate uh, with things like steroids. One more little hack that you can consider is using a combination of two ingredients. Like for example, if you have really thick scales and recurrent dandruff, you can alternate between a salicylic acid or a coal tar based shampoo and a ketoconazole based shampoo on alternate washes. So you get the benefit of both ingredients, your scales get taken care of, the excess of build up gets taken care of and your ketoconazole or any other antifungal shampoos can penetrate better. So that's just one more hack that you can consider doing. A lot of people also wash twice, like you first apply your salicylic based um, shampoo or your coal tar based shampoo and once the thickening has been taken care of, then you apply your ketoconazole based one. So those are a couple of ways you could modulate uh, how you use your shampoos. Lastly, coming to natural ingredients, there's a lot of people who do want to use natural ingredients and home remedies. Um, of all of the home remedies out there, the one thing I feel is something you could consider is tea tree oil based shampoos. So I know this is not something you're going to take out of your fridge and apply it is after all a shampoo again. But amongst these natural ingredients, so all natural ingredients, tea tree oil is something that may actually work because it does have uh, some amount of antifungal and anti-inflammatory properties as well. However, if it doesn't work, then you know you need to go up to the higher ingredients. And of course, there's a much longer list of what not to do when it comes to natural ingredients. So as I said, tea tree oil, great, but lemon, camphor, baking powder, baking soda, coffee scrubs, you know, I was doing a, a little research before I made this video to see what's out there on the internet and I was amazed by the variety of things from your fridge that people are putting on their heads. Eat those things, you know. You don't need a salad on your scalp. You need to eat those things. It'll actually help you better if you eat all of those veggies and the vitamin C's um, in all of your vegetables and fruits. Eat them. You do not need to apply it on your scalp. In fact, things like lemon can actually worsen inflammation on your scalp. I think lemon is the most commonly used DIY that I've seen on the internet. And uh, lemon can actually worsen the inflammation on your scalp that that dandruff is causing. So, um, please, just refrain, please. Secondly, oiling, what we spoke about before. So, oiling essentially, uh, what you're doing with an oil is it's an occlusive. So, it's forming a nice film on the surface of your scalp. It's occlusive. It's providing a great, humid, warm environment for that fungus to grow and thrive and flourish. And it's literally going to help your dandruff grow better, right? So um, avoid oiling for sure. Same thing with conditioners. In fact, you know, funny story, uh, olive oil is actually used as a growth medium for malassezia furfur, which is the fungus that causes uh, dandruff. 
so uh, it's used in petri dishes olive oil is used it's added to these petri dishes to help this fungus to grow so do not use oils on your scalp i know the marketing game for all of these uh, companies is very strong because you know everybody uh, falls prey to this whole natural claim like patanjali we saw the kind of marketing they were doing the deal is that just because it's natural doesn't mean it's better just because it's lemon doesn't mean it's going to be healthy for your scalp just because it's oil doesn't mean it's going to help your hair you know i have nothing against oils uh, oils in fact are great hair conditioners i regularly oil my hair about half an hour before i shower because they're actually great hair conditioners coconut oil in particular has been found to reduce protein loss from your hair uh, shafts so oiling your hair is great but do not oil your scalp particularly if you have dandruff if you face hair thinning or hair fall there's a lot of serums out there which can help you with hair growth but oils are not going to do that um if you don't have dandruff you don't have these concerns okay go ahead and you can still consider it's not going to do you any harm but if you have dandruff just avoid oiling lastly coming to the maintenance aspect of things uh maintenance is a very big concern you know uh, most of the patients who come to my opd for dandruff typically tell me that you know uh, till the point that i was using the shampoos that you gave me my dandruff was well in control and as soon as i stopped using those shampoos it's all come back so what's the use of taking treatment the use is that you first get the severe inflammation and the inflammatory phase of your dandruff to be gone but i'm not giving you a new scalp right i'm just getting rid of your dandruff your scalp has the same tendencies to develop dandruff again that same fungus will overgrow again so uh, what you need to do is some amount of maintenance in terms of long term usage of shampoos like these use them once a week or once in two weeks to prevent these things from happening and if at all it flares you can start using it twice a week again in saying that a lot of the anti fungal shampoos can see resistance they can develop your the fungus can develop resistance to these uh, shampoos uh, so don't use them for years on end ingredients like zinc pyrethrin uh, salicylic acid or coal tar they have a physical mechanism of action so they are not going to cause resistance so you can keep using those uh, but not the anti fungal ones lastly the only thing of concern is if your dandruff is still not going away despite doing all of these things it keeps coming back or if it's extremely thick what else could it be so the biggest differential when we talk about seborrheic dermatitis is scalp psoriasis so scalp psoriasis sounds really scary but don't worry about it even if you do have it it's very much treatable very much controllable now how do you know it's scalp psoriasis and not just dandruff typically the signs are recurrent dandruff extremely thick plaques on the surface of your scalp like you know if you look at it you will see these thick white plaques it's not just scales it's thick plaques on the surface of your skin or there's a lot of redness a lot of inflammation or the most telltale uh, sign typically that we were taught to look for is extension beyond your scalp margins like you know if you see those plaques extending onto your forehead or your neck onto normal skin that is um, you know not hairy that is when uh, the index of suspicion for scalp psoriasis goes super high if you think this is what it could be or if you're doubtful about it do talk to your dermatologist these are not things to be treated on your own in saying that if you have any questions if you're worried about your dandruff and you don't know what to do you've tried a couple of treatments it's still not going away do ask me in the comments and i would be happy to answer also please do subscribe to our page it would really help us um, it will give us some added motivation to keep putting out content like this thank you see you